All right, next one is from Fluids18, <clears throat> but it's not so much a question about Fluids18 per se and more sort of a general question that is born from attempting to solve that problem. So I'll deal with the, the general question. Um, could you explain how to arrive at equation two, which is this uh, water horsepower equation from one in the attached screenshot, if we convert Q, the volume flow rate, um, from cubic feet per second to GPM, and we use values for G, 32.1, and for the density of water, and then convert the whole thing from foot pounds per second to horsepower, we should be able to go from one to two, right? Yes, we should be. <laughs> so uh, let's try. I, um, I put together just kind of a quick example to uh, illustrate those two, and hopefully we can reconcile uh, those two formulas together. So a couple of um, conversion factors that we'll need as we go here. One horsepower is 550 foot pound force per second. We'll need that. And we'll also need um, one cubic foot per second is 449 GPM. So let's write down our two equations. That first equation, we have the work done by a pump is Q, I'm gonna use the first one here, Q gamma H over efficiency. Did I miss anything? Q, Q gamma H, I'm sorry, it's W dot equals. And we're trying to reconcile that with WHP equals Q delta H over 3960. So in principle, these formulas should basically do the same thing, except for the fact that the one on the right is more made for your convenience. The idea here is that we're supposed to be able to put um, a value in for Q already in GPM, which oftentimes it'll be given that way in problems. And we put a value in for, um, for the head pressure uh, developed by the pump, which will already be in feet. And then this thing just magically cranks out an answer that is already in horsepower. And that is why it's a very nice formula to use many times. But the more general version of that is this I guess you could say it's a more powerful formula because it can be applied in a wider range of situations. And ultimately it should lead us in this direction. And if we were to start from here and you know, be willing to do the unit conversions along the way, it should ultimately lead to the same answer. So uh, let's see if it does. And I'll, I'll uh, make some assumptions along the way and you know, either in the chat or just to yourself, make sure that you're on board with the assumptions I'm making and not just uh, you know taking my word for it. Make sure you kind of take yourself through that. So the first one is the efficiency. Um, the work done by a pump could be the hydraulic horsepower or water horsepower, which is what this formula is meant to describe. It could also be the brake horsepower where um, the difference between the two uh, is the efficiency. So I'm just gonna assume for the sake of conversation here that the efficiency is 100% so that we can ignore that difference, which is to say that the work done by the pump is the same as the brake horsepower, which is the same as the water horsepower. That's not always the case because efficiency often is in play, but just for the sake of conversation, we're gonna take it out of play. Um, the next thing we want to do is maybe just make up some numbers and see if we can get this thing to align. So let's use the starting assumption that we have. We'll do a test. We have a volume flow rate of um, 100 GPM. And we'll suppose that we have a um, delta H of 100 feet. And let's also suppose that we are not dealing with water because we want to 
we want to prove that this works in a general case. And one of the considerations here is, hey, is this formula only for water? And what I'm going to argue, and I think it's really it comes down to the crux of this question, is that even though it's not stated, you're invited to throw the specific gravity into this formula if it's appropriate to do so. You can put this in here. If you're dealing with water, obviously you don't have to because the specific gravity is one. But I'm going to make the case that we can put that in there if it's appropriate to do so. And let's say we have a, a fluid whose specific gravity is 0.9. And let's just do it both ways. So starting with the equation on the right, we're going to get WHP equals 100. I'm not even going to write the units, right? Because it's required that the flow rate be in GPM. The, um, the head developed by the pump be in feet, and it is. Specific gravity is unitless. So that will be 0.9. And that's all going to be divided by 3960. Which if I did this right earlier today, that's 2.27 horsepower. And now let's check that against this equation. So we're saying the work developed by the pump should be the same as the hydraulic horsepower for 100% efficiency. But now we got to do a whole bunch of unit conversions. So let's have some fun. We're going to start with the 100 GPM and then divide by 449 GPM per cubic foot per second. Uh, and then we're multiplying by the gamma. Let's talk about gamma for a moment. What is the definition of specific gravity? Well, specific gravity is the ratio of the specific weight or the density, take your pick, of the fluid that we're dealing with, right? Whatever it is, maybe it's uh, something less dense than water, so maybe it's oil, divided by the specific weight of water. You can also use density, by the way. You could say the density of oil over the density of water, however you like to think about it. But since this formula calls for gamma, we use gamma. So now if we want to get gamma by itself, we have to multiply by the specific weight of water on both sides. So our gamma, in this case, should equal Sg times specific weight of water, which is 0.9 times 62.4, and that has units of pound force, not pound mass, because we chose to use specific weight. If we use density, it would be pound mass per cubic foot. And that result is, I didn't even compute it. I just put it in. So 0 0.9 times 62.4 pound force per cubic foot. And then we have to multiply by H, which is the same in both cases. So that's 100. And if we do all of that, this cubic feet will cancel with this cubic feet. And we end up with, on uh, the GPMs cancel. And we end up with uh, foot pounds per second. So I got 1251. And if you divide that by 550 foot pounds per second per horsepower, then we get 2.27 horsepower. So what are the takeaways here? The takeaway is that, yes, the formula is reconciled. Um, and that we have to be conscious of the specific weight and how to apply the specific gravity definition. And if you prefer to use this more general formula, you have to be prepared to do the unit conversions, which, you know, they're not, they're not overly complicated, but you know, it does add a, a layer. I think most, most engineers are gonna wanna go for this equation whenever they can. And pretty often on the PE exam, you'll be able to use this, uh, this equation and not have to uh, jump back to the general one, which is why it's offered. But, you know, you should be prepared to use either and just recognize that. I guess the 
the main takeaway here is people look at this and see WHP, water horsepower, this formula is only for water. And the only thing that makes it only for water is that they haven't bothered to write the SG term in there, but you can write it in and you can use it for water. So uh, uh, for non-water. Right, uh, thanks Dan, I, this is super helpful. Um, I think you were right in the email that you sent in the morning, if it is about 32.2, uh, sorry, 32.14, and it is, if I take that out of the equation, then my answer is right. So I use the other formula uh, that is there, which has the G term. And I don't know, is that wrong then? Is that is that formula wrong then? Oh, I, I know what this is. You should go back and watch the office hours from the archive in the last couple of weeks. You'll find a, a video in there where we talk about the definition of gamma. It's come up a few times actually. Okay. Um, it's defined in SI units as rho G, but right. in but in US customary units, it's defined as rho G over G sub C. And this drives everyone crazy when they start studying for the oh, P exam. I see, okay, okay. So that's how I'll, the 32 I'll goes away and yeah. And, and just really, really short version, most engineers are just gonna take the liberty of taking the same magnitude, 62.4 pound mass per cubic foot and when they want to do gamma, they'll just change pound mass to pound force. Same magnitude. Okay, okay got it. Okay, cool. Thanks. Cool.